Hi Leo, Sun, Moon and Risings. Welcome to your August 2022 forecast. My name is Kaylin and today I'm going to be using Tropical Astrology and the Whole Sign System to cover the major transits for you guys. So you can watch this horoscope if you are a Leo Ascendant, Sun or Moon. If you're only going to watch one horoscope for the month, I would recommend that you watch your Ascendant Sign horoscope otherwise known as your rising sign, because it will be the most accurate for you overall, generally speaking. Having said that, you Leo suns will find that this horoscope tells you more about your career and your life goals, whereas you Leo moon people will find that this horoscope pertains to your family life, your emotional needs, as well as your property and living circumstances. So now let's get into the horoscope. On the 1st or 2nd of August, depending where you live in the world, Mars will form a conjunction with Uranus in Taurus in your 10th house at 18 degrees. Now, many of you who watched my July horoscope will remember that I covered the Uranus North Node and Mars conjunction at the very end. This is a continuation from that, and that is because Mars was at 17 degrees during that conjunction, whereas now it's caught up to Uranus. So just to recap... This indicates that your career, your professional life or your public reputation, as well as your public identity are in for a huge change. So basically, this can indicate that a new opportunity for work may be cropping up. You may be experimenting in your career. You may decide that you want to quit your job unceremoniously, or there may be a new position which becomes available out of the blue that you have to act on very, very quickly. Now, for some of you who are currently employed, your work, well, your um, your efforts in your workplace can become well known or your actions, just generally speaking, can reach a large audience. So whether you're working or not, when your midheaven is activated, you will find that you are more visible, whether this is in the public eye, whether this is to um, people that you know or just people knowing your name. So this can bring some sort of... Um, viral effect when it comes to your actions. Just to give you an example, when Will Smith executed that infamous slap, his midheaven was activated. So you can become very well known during this kind of transit. Now, it doesn't need to be negative or scandalous. It could be that you are basically um, making some sort of announcement or revealing something about your identity in a public way, which, which reaches a large audience. This could be quite definitive. You could be um, coming out as gay. You could be coming out as a survivor of domestic violence and abuse. You know, it's this conjunction indicates there being something shocking or unpredictable or um, rev revelatory in nature coming through. And this will set the tone for the next two years with respect to the Mars-Uranus conjunction, but with the inclusion of the North Node, which we saw on the 31st of July, you know, this is setting the stage for the next 15 years for you. So I would highly recommend that you go back and watch my July horoscope right at the end where I cover the Uranus North Node and Mars conjunction in explicit detail and at length. Now on the 4th of August, Mercury is going to enter the sign of Virgo. So it will be transiting your second house for about three weeks until the 25th of August. Normally I don't mention Mercury transits because they come and go so quickly, but because Mercury is exalted in the sign of Virgo and it rules over rules over Virgo, this is a very uh, potent transit for Virgo, if you will. And because Mercury will be in your second house, this is all about your finances, your resources, valuables, possessions, as well as food and diet, and um, and you know this can see you paying a lot of attention to the details of your spending habits, 
your budgeting, you know, whether you have some sort of budgeting system or maybe you don't, this can see you implementing a new spendings and budgeting scheme. Now, you may be investing in a new app or new software or signing up to some sort of um, newsletter which can assist you with managing your finances or tracking stocks, trading stocks. Uh, it could be signing up for a um a crypto wallet as well. And I'm saying this because Mercury rules over your 11th house, which is Gemini. So it is connected to um, your finances in the digital space, as well as, you know, the stock market and so on and so forth. And Mercury rules over technology. So that's why I'm talking about apps and software. And um, on a different note, because the second house rules over food and Mercury is associated with planning and cataloging, cataloging this can see you um, maybe signing up to a new app which is related to um, tracking the nutritional value of foods that you eat. Or this could be for food-related uh, matters in general. Maybe you want to download or pay for an app that helps you track um, your uh, needs if you have diabetes and you know for some of you this could be related to food as in how to grow a garden maybe you're researching articles maybe you've got an app that tells you when is the best time to plant your seeds water your garden you know harvest your crops and whatnot or you could just come across a great recipe now because the second house is connected to possessions and valuables and mercury is the sign is a planet which represents sales. This is a good time to sell off your possessions and valuables if you no longer have a use for them. And I'm sure many of you will be buying up a storm um, in general as well, you know, obviously taking into account the financial climate. But on a personal level, Mercury through the second house can see you tappity tap tapping with your credit card. So, you know, if that's something that you want to avoid, just be mindful of it. Now, on the 11th of August, Venus is going to enter Leo, which means it will be transiting your first house. Yay. This coincides with you being in the thick of your season, you know, so Leo season will continue until around the 22nd or the 23rd of August. So this can see you feeling more attractive, more beautiful, glowing. Maybe you're receiving a lot of compliments on your appearance. Maybe you're investing into your appearance, whether that's to do with, you know, makeup, beauty, hair, new wardrobe, updating your wardrobe, or just changing how you present yourself. I know this is sort of like a superficial um, transit in, in this respect, but, you know, maybe you're changing how you do your makeup, changing how you dress, changing how you present yourself. Um, this can see you being more flirtatious. This can see you um, maybe even starting a new romance because Venus rules over your third house, which is connected to friends. So this could be a romance that is starting off with a friend or someone that you know. It could be someone in your neighborhood. Um, with Venus ruling over your 10th house, it could be someone in the workplace, it could be your boss. Oh, it's 11.11 right now on the clock. So um, you will be more visible during this time. You know, with the sun and Venus transiting Leo, you will be getting more attention. And, you know, this is a great time for you to um, network, collaborate, uh, put yourself out there. Venus has the quality of attracting things to it, whereas Mars is more like going out there and, you know, pursuing someone or something. But having said that, with the sun in your first house as well, it could go either way. So um, if you are wanting to attract a new romance, okay, which is Venus or a new job or a promotion, which is Venus ruling over your 10th house and the sun in Leo, or new friendships. Just write it down, speak it out into the universe and just make it known that this is what you want to attract into your life and you will have greater manifestation abilities during this period of time. So basically, um, Venus will be in Leo from the 11th of August till the 5th of September and um, the most potent time for you, though, will be the 11th of August till around the 22nd or the 23rd of August, because that's when Venus and the Sun will both be in Leo. Now, 
on the 18th of August, Venus in Leo in your first house is going to make a trine to Jupiter in Aries in your ninth house. And that will be at eight degrees. And Jupiter will be retrograde as well. So this is an amazing transit, although it is brief. It involves the lesser benefic in astrology, which is Venus, and it involves the greater benefic in astrology, which is Jupiter. So when these two planets of good fortune, blessings, abundance, and money and wealth get together in a positive, harmonious aspect, such as the trine, it brings through blessings. It brings through opportunities. And these will impact you directly because Venus is in your first house, all right? So with Jupiter being the planet of education, knowledge, wisdom, travel, the law, and with it being in the ninth house, you know, we're tying all of these things in together. So an opportunity could bubble up around this time, which once again is the 18th of August, which involves international travel education, whether that is you learning or teaching. Uh, This could involve coaching. This could involve a communications piece or a creative work that you've done being circulated or being published. Now, because it involves Jupiter, which represents generosity, it could be that this international travel trip could be all expenses paid. You know, that's best case scenario. Or Maybe your ticket is paid for, or maybe there is some sort of leg up that you receive, you know, which is connected to travel. And also, if you are flying during this period of time, this is the perfect time to ask for an upgrade on your flight. Um, and you might just get it. Okay, so dress up, you Leos. Now, on a different level, with education, you could be accepted into some sort of arts or culinary or acting school. So what I am focusing on here is that Jupiter in the ninth house represents schools and Venus is all about creativity. So that's where art comes in. That's where acting comes in, performance, dance as well. And this is also indicated by the fact that Jupiter rules over your fifth house too. So this is a good time for you to apply. And because Jupiter is a retrograde, some of you could just be hearing back from an institution or a school that you had already submitted an application to, or an opportunity could come back around to you. So just as an example on the travel front, maybe you had tried to initiate some sort of travel trip and it didn't work out or it got delayed and now it's delayed up until this point in time. Now, Venus rules over your third house, which is connected to communications. So this is writing. Um, Like I said, with Venus, this could also be um, anything to do with the arts. Uh, Venus is food, which is why I mentioned, you know, uh, a culinary school, you know, baking, cooking, whatever. Um, It could even be like some sort of cadetship. And with Jupiter ruling over the ninth house, um, you could even have the opportunity to maybe have a, um, what is it called? Not a cadetship. What is it for law? Oh my God, I've gone blank. Anyway, um, and this could this could be for um, women's rights, especially because it involves Venus. You may be asked to be a guest speaker or a presenter, or you could be asked to give a performance, especially because Jupiter rules over the fifth house. And this could be to do with finances as well, because it involves money. Um, maybe this maybe this um, education program or teaching or coaching program or opportunity could be connected to connected to finances as well. On a different level, you could be meeting with someone that you admire. You could receive great advice from someone who is a um, well-respected person in the, um, in the industry that you're involved in or in the I mean, it doesn't have to be work-related. You know, this could also just be um, 
you know, your hobbies and passions, especially because Jupiter rules over the fifth house. So you could meet someone who um, gives you some free advice or maybe makes an introduction for you in the workplace. This can very well involve your work and your professional identity as well. And that is because Venus rules over your 10th house. Now, some of you could receive news that you're becoming a grandparent, especially because Jupiter is in the ninth house, which is the fifth house from your fifth house. So this represents your child having a child, if that makes sense. And um, again, this is another indicator for a new romance coming through. I would expect this to be with a foreigner or someone who is very cultured, well-respected, very educated, um, an erudite individual or someone who um, just has a lot of influence, okay, very Jupiterian in nature, or there could be a Sag or a Pisces. Now, I would pay attention to what is happening around the 11th of February in 2023, and that is because Jupiter will hit that same degree again, but in direct motion. So Jupiter is, you know, retrograde at eight degrees during this trine. So it's going backwards, backwards, backwards into Pisces at the end of the year then back into Aries just before Christmas. And then it'll be at that spicy degree, eight degrees um, on the 11th of February. So what you do around the middle of August could be connected to what's coming through for you in February. Okay. So on the 20th of August, Mars is going to enter the sign of Gemini, which means it will be transiting your 11th house. Usually Mars spends like seven-ish weeks, give or take, in one sign, but this transit is going to span for seven months. And that is because Mars will have a retrograde cycle from the end of October through till the 12th of January. So that's why Mars has this extended transit through Gemini, through your 11th house. So this is a great time for you guys. Let me just share for you personally what happened when Mars entered my 11th house and was retrograde there. And this is in whole sign, by the way, uh, for me personally. Um, I had started my YouTube channel already but I really leveled up with my horoscopes. I think I actually started doing my horoscopes during the Mars retrograde period, whereas prior to that, I think I had just done like um, a couple of tarot readings on my personal channel. So during the retrograde period for me, this is when I leveled up. This is when I took on much more complex transits in my horoscopes. And this is when my personal YouTube channel, you know, saw a lot of traction. So whatever you are initiating while Mars is in Gemini in your 11th house and while it is direct, so between the 20th of August and the end of October, this is what you will then be um, revisiting during the retrograde period and working really hard on during the retrograde period. So preamble aside, Mars in the 11th house can see you being really bold with making the first move in initiating new connections, networking, reaching out to people. And um, this is where you are the initiator because Mars is where you're taking action. So because Mars rules over your ninth house, you could be reaching out to someone who um, is in the world of let's say, uh, being at an educational level, a university level, college level, a professor, someone who is well-respected. You could be reaching out to um, someone who is involved in a community in your, uh, at your school or at your college. Randomly, you know, sororities and fraternities have just popped into my mind. Um, I'm in Australia, so we didn't have that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give you an example, okay? So you might want to reach out to someone who's a part of a group or a community at a school that you want to attend or a college or a university that you want to attend. You may be reaching out to someone who is part of a spiritual group or a spiritual community or someone who is part of a religious group or community. And I'm saying this because Mars rules over your ninth house, which represents religion, spirituality, and education. You could be making connections with people who live in a foreign country to you, 
who have a very different cultural background to you or who have a different status or, um, you know, maybe their status is, let's status, is elevated. So this is like you wanting to rub shoulders with someone who you think can maybe make some important introductions for you. Now, at worst, Mars through the 11th house can indicate arguing with friends or having a falling out with friends or an existing group or a community that you are a part of. But, you know, with Mars, well, with Mars going with Mars, Mars's seven-month transit in your 11th house, sorry, this indicates you initiating a long-term project, okay, and this can be connected to ninth house matters or fourth house matters with Mars ruling over your fourth house. So just to run through a few different ways that this can play out, you could be joining a new group or community or commencing a long-term project or a project which is very complex and maybe which involves events or large groups of people that is centered around the travel and tourism industry, spirituality, religion, education, the law, court systems, politics, the import and export industry, um, especially if it involves cars or vehicles, social justice and humani- social justice issues and humanitarian causes, which is a blend of the ninth house and the 11th house. Now, with Mars ruling over the fourth house, this could be a group or a community that you are joining or forming or a new long-term project which is connected to land, property, construction. Also, this could be innovation and, and engineering because it's Mars. This could be to do with heritage listed lands, indigenous communities, the car industry, like I said before, and with Mars ruling over your fourth house, this could be initiating a new movement which is connected to family-related matters and fertility. I hope you can read between the lines there of what I'm saying because, you know, I want to make sure that this video reaches as large an audience as possible. And also this could be to do with um, maybe making new policies or advocating for new policies or the rights of nurses, midwives, and um, people who are in the role of being a primary caretaker. So (laughs) uh, lastly, you could be maybe pursuing long-term gains or passive income, which is connected to the stock market, cryptocurrencies, um, or, you know, trying to start some kind of Kickstarter program. So lastly, for, oh, and also getting published because Mars rules over the ninth house. So maybe you will um, have something that you have created or you'll be working on creating something or building a prototype for something that you eventually want to, you know, get circulated and um, produced en masse or at, at a large scale. So lastly, for the month on the 24th of August, Uranus is going to station retrograde in the sign of Taurus in your 10th house at 18 degrees. So once again, we're seeing that 18th degree being activated, which directly pulls in um, whatever you initiated or whatever you were experiencing on a personal level at the end of July and at the beginning of August when we had the Uranus North Node and Mars conjunction and then in turn the Mars and Uranus conjunction. So With Uranus being retrograde, this is about reflecting, reviewing, recalibrating, repositioning, all the re's, you know, going back, looking back and reviewing whatever you initiated around that time or whatever was coming up for you. So because this is in your 10th house, this could be you revisiting um, your exciting new ideas, especially if they pertained to... um, what you wanted to do on a public level, positions of leadership, gunning for a promotion or becoming self-employed or being an advocate for something. Um, This, again, could be to do with your personal uh, reputation, your public reputation. Maybe you're trying to figure out the details of how you can get these things done that you were considering at the end of July or at the beginning of August. Maybe you're trying to enact real change in your life or in your career. Maybe you had a sudden download of information at the end of July or at the beginning of August, and now you're actually putting the wheels in motion, which will lead you to experimenting 
with your career, experimenting with your public identity and how you present yourself. Um, Maybe you're trying to experience more freedom within an organization that you are associated with or that you work for. And, you know, this can see you trying to work out how you can affect real change in your community with respect to a chosen goal. Or this could simply be to do with wanting to um, break free from a contract, whether this is a work contract or a promise that you made someone or an obligation that you have to another person. Or this could even be to do with a relationship, whether that is professional, platonic or romantic. And Uranus will be retrograde until the end of January in 2023. So this is you, you know, fine tuning and working out the details so that you can experience more freedom, expansion and liberation within your career, your identity and how you express yourself in a real and authentic way. And so, Leo, that's all I have for you for August 2022. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. So give it a thumbs up for me. And also, if you want to see more content on this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Enjoy your month ahead. And I will see you guys in September.